Camera of the Future by Edward W. Newcomb Looking backward and calling to mind the heavy, clumsy apparatus I used to be only too glad to own and carry, the absolute inconvenience of the whole process of picture-taking, and the number of discomforts, I can but wonder as I fondly toy with my light, compact little camera, what the camera of 30 years hence will be, what it will be 50, a hundred years from now. For there is no reason to think that photography, young as it is, and full of great opportunities for rich discovery, will remain at a standstill. It could not even if it would, for there are literally millions of photographers, and there are thousands of ambitious experimenters seeking fame and fortune in this field. There is room for them and many more. For wonderfully as the camera of today excels those of 30 years ago, there is great room for improvement in even the latest models. This leads me to speculate on what the camera of the near future will be like. And as I seem to see before me the serious faces of thousands of inventors grappling with deep problems, I feel encouraged to believe that we are on the eve of a solution of some of the most important problems of the present day. Color we are certain to have. The names of four or five established companies claiming to have mastered all the intricate details of photography and the colors of nature pass through my mind. And even though we see little of color work yet, I am sanguine of their success in putting before us ere long something both practical and satisfying. As to animated photography, I doubt not but that it will become common to a certain extent and be within the reach of everyone, although I fancy it will not be in projected pictures that the great majority will find pleasure, but rather through improved mechanical devices for examining prints. Therefore, if animated photography is to obtain with us, it must be through new methods of showing our results. I think these matters will, ere long, be thought out, and that one of the forms of the camera of the near future will be capable of taking and showing animated photographs in color. Then we have our little understood, ill-determined electricity, which undoubtedly will be applied in some way to the camera of the future. Plenty of instances have been recorded of a single flash of lightning leaving a good picture on a tree or house. And how do we know but that when we finally get this electricity harnessed, we may be able to make great use of it in photography. The camera of the future will, perhaps, be of a far different form than that of today. We have reduced the dimensions of our cameras to such an extent that the decrease of another inch in bulk or another ounce in weight seems impossible, and with our various provisions for color, motion, and things yet undreamed of, it hardly appears likely that the wonderful box of a half century hence will be as compact. The camera of the future will ever remain a light tight box of greater or less dimensions, or else it will be no camera at all. Judging from the improvements that have been made in the last 30 years, it will be a treasure indeed, capable of expressing far more than ours of today, less mechanical perhaps more readily governed and not so arbitrary, possibly even responsive to the feelings of each individual, much as the brush is in the hands of the artist. If several artists paint the same scene, it is likely to be handled in as many moods as they are artists, and while we recognize each picture as of the same scene, we realize that each has a different feeling, and it is this individual expression that characterizes one as better than another. Compared to the artist's product, ours with camera and lens is, to say the least, inferior. So many pictures of the same spot by different people are as like as so many impressions from the same type. Let us hope that the eye of the camera of the future will have a less mathematically inclined vision and a little more poesy for those who want it, at least. Another matter that may come about is the removal of certain limitations. 
We often see prettier things at twilight or by gas or lamplight than at any other time, but if they are animated, we are denied the privilege of securing them. For the lens will not see nor the plate receive in less than hours what the eye sees in a second. Now I do not think that this should be impossible or that it should be denied us. I hold that whatever the eye can see, the camera ought somehow to be made secure for us. And I believe that it will one of these days. A fireplace, with grandfather seated before its bright blaze and several children romping about just before bedtime, is no uncommon picture. But, alas, it would be a wonder if that picture could be produced by photography with only the illumination afforded by the blazing logs. Yet I say that this or anything that is light enough to see ought not to be denied the photographer. A sensitive enough receptive surface ought to be at our disposal to secure the many gems that we cannot obtain. In brief, the camera we are to have in 1930 will take whatever we ourselves can see will lend itself to our moods and we will not be bound by such inflexible rules as we are now when using it. The few prophecies I have ventured are merely founded upon our present wants. They are not fancies or guesses. What else that I have not yet even dreamed of in wildest imagination, I can only leave to the prophets and seers. <laughs>